Abama di Natsambadita Ada Imaya Badi Badaya Jara Maranama Primuja Sami Idami Punyam Asawakya Waham Hodu Idami Bonyam Nibanasa Pacheo Hodu Imano Bunya Bagam Sabasata Nandima Sabi Sata Sukita Hondu Today is the 12th March 1998. <clears throat> Our previous Dhamma talk was not recorded <clears throat> on the tape. So I think <clears throat> to have a continuity of Dhamma, we should talk about the same topic <clears throat> little bit. We explain to the meditators <clears throat> the five mental faculties which every meditator must be endowed with. And also, these five mental faculties must be 
siapa yang powerful and kept in balance. We saw Dimaga, the manual of a Buddhist meditation, mentions how a meditator can make these five mental faculties stronger, sharper, and more powerful. It mentions nine ways of sharpening these five mental faculties. <clears throat> but we have to deal, uh, we have no time to deal with these nine ways today because we have to repeat some aspects of these are five mental faculties. <clears throat> As you know, five mental faculties are Sada, Sati, Viriya, Sada, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. These five mental faculties are also known as Bala, Bala and Pali, which is translated into strengths or powers. <clears throat> so these five mental faculties are also the strength of a meditator, which enabled meditator to attain the enlightenment and the cessation of suffering. <clears throat> Sada, confidence of faith through right understanding of Dhamma. Viriya, strenuous effort. Sadi, continuous and constant mindfulness. Samadhi, deep concentration, and Panya, insight, enlightenment, or wisdom, or understanding. <clears throat> this Panya can be translated into knowledge too. But uh, that panya, which is translated into knowledge, is a very weak, very superficial, not deep enough. <clears throat> when panya refers to insight and enlightenment, It's a profound, deep, because there's a kind of a panya, insight or enlightenment, can be attained through personal experience and meditation by learning or by theoretical knowledge. One cannot attain this kind of a panya, insight or enlightenment. <clears throat> but in the five mental faculties, this panya mainly refers to insight and, and enlightenment, but it refers to some knowledge of a Dhamma and wisdom or understanding of Dhamma. <clears throat> so, Sadha and Panya must be kept in balance. 
confidence and faith or understanding or knowledge must be kept in balance. Samadhi and virya must be kept in balance. Concentration and effort must be kept in balance. Sati mindfulness can never be said to be excessive. <clears throat> so when confidence of faith, sadha, is stronger than panya, knowledge or understanding. One can <clears throat> be um, one can easily believe and whatever one was told about or any idea or doctrine or in any person. <clears throat> So he became becomes a credulous. <clears throat> if he is a credulous, he is he tends to believe in any idea or system or doubting very easily. Then he may believe in the wrong idea or birth or doctrine which makes him suffer. <clears throat> but in meditation, we meditate uh, experiences some <clears throat> unusual Thing, meditative experience. Suppose um, he comes to differentiate between the note in mind and uh, the object, the rising and falling movement. Very clearly, the note in mind is a one process. The rising movement is another one. These are not one and the same. They are the two separate process of uh, mentality and physicality. If he experience it, or if he realize it through his experiential knowledge, by observing rising and falling movement very attentively. Then <clears throat> he judge what the Buddha taught is right. When we observe rising and falling movement, Then the observing mind, the noting mind, is one thing. The thing which is observed, rising or falling movement, is another thing. So these are the two separate phenomena. One is a mental phenomena, the other is a physical phenomena. If we are, if we do not practice this mindfulness meditation, and if, if our concentration is not good enough on this, this process of um, rising and falling movement, 
we won't be able to differentiate between mental phenomena, physical phenomena in this way. Then we think these are dual processes of mental and physical phenomena to be me or a person, a being itself. Actually, neither of uh, the dual phenomena is a person, a being itself. The mental state, the note am I, is the mental process. It's a neither a person nor a being, not a self. And physical phenomenon, rising movements and falling movements, are also not a person, not a being, not a self. It's a Actually, is uh, the process of uh, material phenomena, physical phenomena. Because uh, he comes to differentiate between the object and the subject as the two separate process of uh, mentality and physicality. He's uh, very much uh, pleased with it. He's happy with his experience and with, with his realization. Then he think about the Buddha's enlightenment and the Buddha's compassion for his disciple to realize such a thing. In this way, he think is a very much a grateful to the Buddha who teaches us this right path, which leads us to realization of the true nature of a mental and physical phenomena. In this way, he thinks about the Buddha, the Dhamma, and uh, he analyzed it, but uh, he can't, could not analyze it. He think about the greatness of the Buddha. It's a great gratitude to the Buddha, and so on. In this way, his mindfulness is disturbed. Concentration is broken. Then, he can't make progress um, further. <clears throat> His meditation stopped there because of a lack of mindfulness and weakness of a concentration. That is uh, the, despan the disadvantage of sadha, confidence and faith which is stronger than the knowledge or understanding. Then, this is sad, uh, confidence must be balanced with panya, knowledge. Oh, this is wrong. If I think about the Buddha's attributes or the Buddha's greatness or the benefit of Dhamma, it's around. It's this a kind of a distraction. What I should do is to be mindful of whatever arises as it is. Only to be mindful of What's happening is the right part for me to lead to the cessation of a suffering. In this way, 
Panyan, knowledge of the Dharma or understanding of the Dharma, leads him to the right path. <clears throat> then his sadha confidence becomes imbalanced with the Panya knowledge. Then he continued to be mindful of what is happening to his body and mind as it is. He is on the right path, <clears throat> hopeful <clears throat> to attain higher stages by his knowledge, enlightenment, and the cessation of suffering. When Panya, knowledge of Dhamma or understanding of Dhamma is stronger than Sada, faith or confident, or more powerful than Sada. He may analyze what the technique of the technique of a meditation, uh, he may analyze the doctrine of the Buddha. He may analyze any experience that he have uh, in meditation. He may consult <clears throat> his experience with uh, his no theoretical knowledge of a Dhamma. The scripture says so and so. Now I experience this. This is not in conformity with the, what the scripture said. Oh, it's a quite right. It's a very much a conformity with the, in conformity with the, what the Buddha said. In this way. He analyzes his experience, then this is also distraction. Odhaja. It's a mindfulness is broken. Concentration is a broken. Because he because of his uh, analytical knowledge and conceptualization of our experience. Then he can't make progress in his meditation. Then what he should do is uh, he should keep in his mind <clears throat> the omniscient Buddha teaches us this technique of meditation, mindfulness meditation through his personal experience of a Dhamma not by learning from any teacher so it can never be Realm, it's always the right. So I believe in it. In this way, he should increase his faith, a confidence in the technique and the doctrine of the Buddha. Then he won't be, he won't analyze it any longer. He won't think about anything he experienced all the technique. Then that sadha will lead him to the right path, be mindful of what is happening at this moment as it is. Then he will be able to continue his practice. <clears throat> by being aware of uh, each and every mental state and physical process arising at this moment as it is. 
then he can attain higher stages by insight knowledge and uh, enlightenment and the cessation of a suffering. In this way, Panya, knowledge or understanding, should be balanced with Sada. In the same way, when a meditator is a greedy or ambitious to attain enlightenment or to live in peace, having uprooted all agitated mental state, negative mental states of physical uh, mental defilements. So he strives his best to put in too much effort in the practice day and night. He determined, I must attain enlightenment in a week's time. Then he put too much effort in the practice. When he observed, when he note rising movement and falling movement, he very strained himself, put in the, the effort in the practice, noting it too much attentively. Then he became so restless. So his, his mind doesn't go to the object very well. It's not concentrated on it very well. It goes free. <clears throat> then the more the mind is distracted, the more effort he put in the practice in the noting. Then the more distracted distraction it comes to into, into his mind. Later on, sometimes he is angry with his practice. Sometimes he is disappointed with his practice because though I put enough such an effort, strenuous effort, I couldn't concentrate my mind on any object of meditation. I may not hopeful, hopeless. Then he may he may give up the practice, or he may cry over it, or he may have the great deal of anger with his practice. These are the dis disadvantage of too much effort. Then, his too much effort should be balanced with the concentration. He should do either meta meditation or recollections of Buddha's attribute, Buddha knows the power now. <clears throat> Then that mid meditation or recollections of Buddha's attributes make his mind calm and concentrated to a certain extent. Then the mind will become calm to a certain extent. At that time he can switch on vipassana. But his effort must be steady, not too much. That's the one way the effort is balanced with concentration. Then another way is not to practice any kind of asamata meditation, either 
เมตตาโอบุตรนุสติ he should continue his insight meditation but he should relax himself both mentally and physically <coughs> Sometimes he may take rest for sometimes, say about ten minutes or fifteen minutes or thirty minutes, calming his mind. <coughs> Then he <coughs> observe rising, falling movement, very calmly and slowly, keeping in the mind. That I won't expect any progress. What I should do is to be aware of, to be mindful of whatever arises in my body and mind as it is, calmly, steadily, with <coughs> this attitude in my in mind. He should observe rising movement calmly and precisely, not much attentively, but steadily, rising, falling, rising, falling. When the mind goes out, do not be disappointed. It's a nature for the mind. To go out to wander, <clears throat> there is no mind which does not wander or does not think about something else. If we have mind, we have a wandering, thinking, distraction. It's a nature. With this in his mind. Then observe the wandering mind, wandering, 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 wandering. Do not follow until the end of the wandering mind. About five or six times a noting. Then bring the mind back to the primary object steadily and calmly. Rising, falling, rising, falling. In the walking too, he should not note many objects. He should note left, right, or lifting, dropping, lifting, dropping, very precisely and calmly, or lifting, pushing, dropping. Three noting is enough. Not more than that. Observe the lifting very precisely. Perceiving actual movement of a lifting. Then pushing forward. Observing precisely and closely, with relaxation, both mentally and physically. Perceiving actual movement of a pushing forward, then dropping, being aware of actual movement of the dropping. In this way, with the calmness and relaxation, with any. Without any expectation in the progress, observing each movement, lifting, pushing, dropping, or lifting, dropping to time, to to noting. Then gradually his mind will be calm and concentrate to a certain extent on the object of meditation. When the control and concentration gradually gains a momentum, then 
he is on the right path. He should take lesson here because of a too much effort. I have got into trouble. So too much effort is not beneficial for me in this meditation. Steady effort and some degree of a concentration and constant mindfulness will help me to attain the higher stages of my insight and so on. In this way, too much effort can be checked and can be kept in balance with concentration. If concentration is stronger than effort, the concentration tends to change into sloth and tapas, sleepiness. Because uh, we meditate uh, can observe any mental states of physical process very easily and very well. His mind becomes concentrated more and more deeply. Concentration becomes deeper. Then he put some effort. Concentration becomes deepening. He can easily concentrate the mind on any object which is arising at that, this moment. <clears throat> when the abdomen arises, it, he can concentrate on it very easily, comfortably, as if without much effort. Then, because of a deep concentration, because of a very strong concentration, his mental effort becomes less and less. The effort becomes reduced gradually, but the mind is a concentrated well. Then eventually, He hasn't enough effort in the noting or the practice. Because of a weak effort, the mind becomes sluggish, heavy. Then gradually, the concentration changes into sloth and tapa. Then meditator feel nodding, imitating the chameleon. I don't know if my pronunciation is correct. Huh? Chameleon. You know, he's a nodding. <coughs> hmm? Hmm. Why? Because concentration is stronger, the effort is weak. So the mind becomes sluggish and heavy, then it, it changes into sleepiness, drowsiness, sloth and tapa. At that time, what should you should you do? With this is situation of a meditation.
what should you do? Yes, you should enjoy drowsiness. Huh? <laughs> <coughs> and the Buddha's teaching there's so two two words Seya uh, Sukha Maita Sukha Seya Sukha Maita Sukha There's a when a person <coughs> wake up in the morning, but <clears throat> he doesn't want to get up. So he doesn't open his eyes. Then he rolls through this side and this side. <clears throat> There's a enjoying sleepiness. It's a called Seya Sukha, enjoyment of sleeping. But when in sitting meditation, a meditator sleepy, feels sleepy, he doesn't know that it's sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Because if he notes sleepiness attentively, then sleepiness will go away, then he won't enjoy it. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> That's the called enjoyment of a sleepiness is sort on of top of Midda Sukha and Bali. <clears throat> so should you enjoy it or should you try to overcome it? Huh? trying to overcome it. How can you try to overcome it? Because uh, your effort in the noting is weak, so you feel sleepy, heavy in the mind and the body too. So you put more effort in the noting. Note sleepiness more attentively. Sleepy, 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 like that. Sometimes, no mental note, but Babel noting should be done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Babel noting. Sleepy, 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 like that. Then the mind becomes instigated and becomes alert and active. Then sleepiness goes away. But uh, sometimes um, <coughs> there are some meditator who has, <coughs> in this situation, half enjoyment and half noting. If mm -hmm. half enjoyment of sleepiness and half noting, <laughs> it means uh, he can enough put enough effort in the note and he note sleepy, sleepy. <laughs> Can he overcome sleepiness? Can't. Yes. <clears throat> put strenuous effort effort in the noting and note more attentively, energetically. Sleepy, 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 drowsy, 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 drowsy. Then sleepiness will go away. If if it if it doesn't work, then you should open the eyes. With the eye open, you should note drowsy, drowsy, sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Then you'll be able to overcome the state of sluggishness. Not only you, but also the Venerable Maulana, the second rank disciple of the Buddha. When she was about to 
attain enlightenment. After he listened to the Buddha's discourse, he attained the, the first stage of enlightenment, Sota Padimaka, stream entry. But for the higher three stages of enlightenment, he had to practice meditation. He practiced it near a village named Kanawala Buddha. He wanted to sit. He went to his seat under a tree and sat down, sat down and practiced mindfulness. In a short time, he felt sleepy and drowsy. He observed it, he couldn't overcome it, because it is a drowsiness, a sleepiness, is produced by tiredness. It can be easily overcome. But the Buddha, living in his monastery in Veluvana, knew the situation of a venerable Magulana's meditation. So he came to the venerable Magulana and sat <coughs> on a seat prepared for him. In the time of the Buddha, Every monk has to put a seat for the Buddha near him when the Buddha comes and encourages him. The Buddha has to sit on it there. So the omniscient Buddha came to the Mogulana and sat on the, the seat. The Venera Maglana seems to be not wake up. He seems to continue to be drowsy, sleepy in front of the Buddha because he was very much tired. Then the Buddha said, Mogolana, Mogolana, are you feel sleepy? Are you sleepy? Only at that moment the Venerable Mogolana becomes awake. And then <coughs> sleepiness is gone. Sleepiness is gone. <coughs> but the Buddha taught the Magulana the seven ways of uh, overcoming sleepiness. That discourse is known as Pachalaya Manasutta. Pachalaya Manasutta. <clears throat> but I don't want to deal with it now. Why? Because there's no time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but one of uh, the way the Buddha said to the Moglana is, Moglana, if you feel sleepy, if it's uh, not overcome by the me uh, the words that uh, I taught you then you should do <coughs> as I told you now. When you feel sleepy and it's not overcome, you should pull your ear pull ear and twist it. <laughs> uh. 
very good method, huh? <laughs> Yes, you should try. <clears throat> Pull your ear and twist it by both hands. <clears throat> That's uh, one of the seven ways of uh, overcoming <clears throat> this is sleepiness. Yes, if you put strenuous effort in the noting and note sleepiness more attentively, energetically with the eye open, but it doesn't work, then you should pull your ear and twist it so that you can cry over. <laughs> <laughs> then your mind will be alert and active. Sleepiness will go away. It's a sure way. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And uh, <coughs> sleepiness, which is produced by lack of effort and a stronger concentration, <coughs> can be overcome by walking meditation too. So you get up, do not continue to sit, get up and walk. You should do brisk walking, brisk walking, walking strongly and quickly, but observing the movement of the body, walking, 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 that's all. Not left and right, not left and pushing, dropping, walking, walking, walking. <clears throat> In this way too, you can overcome this sleepiness because uh, your effort becomes stronger by walking, brisk walking. Sleepiness is going. About six or seven years ago, when I conducted meditation retreat in Thailand, <coughs> The two Dutch ladies, nuns, the Buddhist nuns, join a retreat. The younger one, about 35 years old. In early morning, every morning he, she felt sleepy. She couldn't sit very well, she couldn't walk very well, even walking. She felt sleepy, drowsy. Sometimes she, <coughs> she goes astray because of her sleepiness. I taught her some many ways to overcome this sleepiness. That it didn't work. So I told her, yes. You should walk backward <laughs> to overcome this sleepiness. She did. <laughs> she did backward. <clears throat> Walking area is also very good, very large. She did walking backward, 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 backward. Only one walking meditation overcome her sleepiness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she was very much pleased. Whenever she is sleepy, she walks backward. <laughs> then later on, <clears throat> that nun came to my meditation center in Rangon and continued her practice about two years. Then again went home back to Netherlands and then about after three months then I came to continue her practice at meditation center. 
another one year and so on. She was a very much a successful. <coughs> so <coughs> the point is when you feel sleepy or drowsy, it comes from either concentration or any other source. What you should do to put more effort in the noting and note every object, especially sleepiness, more attentively and energetically. Then it will go away. If it doesn't go away, with the eye open, you note it, then it will go away. If it doesn't go away, go away, what you should do is pull your ear and twist. Then if it doesn't work, you get up and walk backward. <clears throat> and backward walking, you have to put more effort in the noting. That's why sleepiness goes away. So, in this way, the five mental faculties must be kept in balance. Then you can make a progress in your meditation. Enough, I think. Tomorrow we'll continue.